This Yoga 101 video is all about the poses that you're most likely to see in a yoga class. These are 10 poses that are quite important in your practice, but especially if you want to become knowledgeable about what's going on in the yoga world. And thank you to the New York Times for presenting these 10 poses for us. Now, some of these may not work for you, so it's time to modify. I'll give you modifications to the poses, and you may want to use props. If you've got a blanket or a beach towel and blocks, that will be helpful for this practice. We'll begin on our belly. On your belly, press your fingertips down, spread your fingers, come up to all fours position. Notice that your wrists are no longer right under your shoulders. When you tuck your toes under and lift your pelvis up, you come to Adha Svanasana, or Downward Facing Dog. In yoga, we use a lot of Sanskrit terms to describe the yoga pose. This is downward facing dog. As you spread your fingers, as you lift your pelvis, you can lift your heels and maybe bend your knees if you're feeling a lot of tugging right behind the knees. But as you stretch out, can you bring your heels a little bit closer to the mat? Now for some of us, that have got wrist issues, it might be best to come to your knees. And as you come to your knees, draw back with your toes tucked under so that the hands are not so weight bearing and it gives a little bit more freedom in the wrist. From Downward Facing Dog, look forward and come to a plank position, Palankasana. Draw your shoulders forward, draw your pelvis down slightly. And again, if you've got wrist issues, take your knees down to the mat. With your upper arms parallel to the mat, forearms perpendicular, lower yourself down to the mat. Come to a cobra pose, finger tip top position. Draw your elbows back, hug your elbows in, toward the midline of your mat as you lift up and slowly soften down. Do that two more times. On the in-breath, you want to lift up, not too tall, just get a nice evenness to the breath and a nice engagement of the back muscles as you pulse up, exhale lower yourself to the mat, come to all fours position, tuck your toes under, lift your pelvis up, walk your hands back to your feet, hands to the low back, rise up. We'll do a standing pose called tree pose. The Sanskrit word for this is vriksasana. That requires us to stand on one leg. So you might want to be near a wall if balance is an issue for you. With your left leg firmly planted, lift your right leg up. Draw it in as close to the ribs as possible before taking the right foot to the inner thigh. Try to avoid pushing the foot into the knee. You can go below the knee if you wish or above, but see if you can just hold a nice steadiness on your standing left leg as you spread your wings and you get this nice stability in the pose as you're breathing in and breathing out. And as you're ready, you can slowly come out of the pose with the right leg firmly planted. Hug your left leg in. Take your left foot to the 
inner right thigh. And again, spread your wings. Get this nice fullness to the chest. Enjoy the freedom that you can express in the pose, in tree pose, in Brikshasana. Slowly release your hands down. Release your foot down. Step your feet nice and wide apart. Look at your feet, make sure they start parallel. Now turn your right toes out so that the right foot is now parallel to the long edge of the yoga mat. Inhale, lift your arms up. Draw your right hand down to your shin. Or if you've got yoga blocks, you might want to use those. As you keep your back leg really strong and breathe in and out through the nose, you can allow your hand to draw a little bit lower toward your foot. If you feel a lot of pulling sensation on the front leg, just bend your knee slightly so that you have a little bit more freedom to open the chest, maybe even take your gaze up toward the sky. Root down to lift up out of the pose. Come to the opposite side. So turn the toes so that the right foot is parallel to the back edge of the mat. The left foot is pointed toward the back of the mat. Draw your left hand down. With the hand established either at your shin or at a block. Enjoy your breath. If you have any neck issues, just allow your gaze to be down toward the floor. If you can, lift your gaze toward the sky. Keep a nice engagement of the lifted arm with a nice spread to your fingers. Root down to lift yourself slowly out of the pose. Release your hands. Come to all fours position. In all fours position, have your hands nice and wide apart. Draw your inner big toes together. Draw your knees nice and wide apart, almost as wide as the mat is, and draw your pelvis down. Now for some of us, the knees are not so happy in this pose. So if that's the case for you, by all means, modify the pose. Maybe you can just sit back on blocks or have a blanket right behind your knees. Release your head down. Can you take your head all the way to the mat, forehead all the way to the mat, with the fingers spreading, even lifting up to the fingertip tops allows so much more fullness to the pose. Expand to find the fullness of your breath here. If you need a rest between poses, this is a nice go-to pose. In your own time, make your way to a seated pose now. You may want to use a blanket to sit on. As you sit on a little elevation, it allows the spine to extend so fully. With your feet in front of you, bend your right knee Hug the right knee in. Draw your right foot to the outside of your left leg and continue to turn your heart toward the right knee. Walk your right hand back as you open the chest really nicely. In this seated twist, keep the right foot Pressing down to the base of the toe is really working to keep the knee hugging in toward the ribs. Release your right leg. Come to two straight legs and engage your legs very nicely before bending your left leg. Take your left foot just to the outside of the right knee 
as you pull the right knee in toward your rib to see if you can keep a nice alignment of the knee. So you don't want it moving too far to the left or too far to the right. You want it aligned very nicely as you step your left hand back just a little bit more to get fullness in the twist. Release out of the pose to come to lie down on your back. Bend your knees. With your knees bent, with your feet hip distance apart, bend your elbows and press your elbows down. As you press your elbows down, notice how that gives a nice lift to your chest. Press your head back to strengthen your neck muscles. Inhale, lift your pelvis up off the mat. Keep this nice lifting quality. In some classes, you might find that teachers ask you to interlace your fingers behind your back. I just prefer the elbows pressing to get even more length to the front side of the body. As you press your head back, you feel a spaciousness there. The shoulder blades hug in, the legs are active. If you find that the knees go wide away from each other, use a block to squeeze into that block to create nice engagement there. Now slowly release your pelvis down, release your arms and extend your legs. Those are the 10 poses that you're highly likely to practice when you come to a yoga class. This pose, Shavasana, the corpse pose, is quite critical to assimilating the actions of the 10 poses that you just practiced. So find a comfortable position. Allow your arms to relax. Your legs to relax. That allows the pelvis and your shoulders to become very heavy on the mat. that serves to allow for greater relaxation when the limbs feel very supported by the earth. Breathe in deep and out long. In breath, a long out breath. You breathe in through the nose and out through the nose. Breathe very freely, very naturally. Enjoy this resting time, this time to just assimilate the actions of the poses. Enjoy.
Shavasana. Namaste.